Hey there YouTubian, CJ Holmes here. Well, I'm finally putting out part two of the Titanic Wreck Diorama tutorial, how I made it. So sorry for the delay, just so many things going on, and quite frankly, uh, it just took me several months to work up uh, the energy and uh, the interest to get going with it again. I also ran into a severe problem with the hull that I showed in part one. It just was not coming out the way I wanted it to. So the bottom line is I had to scrap that hull and um, start with another one. Happily, I found a uh, an assembled Titanic model at the local thrift store. <clears throat> and so I picked it up and I'm going to be uh, basing a lot of the kit on that model that I purchased. It was finished, and I'm sure someone took a lot of pride in the build, but it was basically a glue bomb. And uh, so anyway, I didn't feel bad about tearing it apart and converting it into a wreck model. So a lot of what I'm building from now on is going to be uh, based upon this uh, model that I bought at uh, the thrift store. All right, so let's start with the hull. I did finish the uh, figuring of the hull and uh, all the things that are involved in turning it into as authentic a wreck as I can make it. We'll start on the port side here and uh, everyone's familiar with the uh, gaping hole that's in the starboard side. Nothing to do with the iceberg, it has everything to do with when the ship sank to the bottom, hit the seabed and then bent. But there is also major fracturing along the port side right below the bridge area. So I modeled that by basically just cutting all the way down. I thinned the walls of the styrene plastic and cut it all the way down creating this fracture appearance. And then subsequently I uh, reinforced the inside of the hull with a bit of plastic. There's also some fracturing along this portion of the port side hull, as well as a little bit of folding that I achieved with uh, just running a hot soldering iron up and down the inside very carefully until I got some, some de uh, deformation of that portion of the hull. Also, the forward D-deck uh, gangway door is open, and so I cut out that uh, gangway door on the model, and I will, at a later time, put the open door in. But in the meantime, I had to uh, open that up, nice little square hole, and then did the uh, damage at the rear end of the bow section on both the uh, port side and the starboard side. Also, the bulwarks that enclose, I don't want to say enclose, that are on each side of the forward well deck, they're uh, off on the wreck. So I cut out those areas of the bulwarks there is a little flap on each side that I will add at a later time. But the bottom line with those is that when the main deck area is cemented to the hull, it should be flush with the sides of the hull. The bulwarks are gone except for the middle portions, a little flap that will be on each side. Right, cool. So let's go to the starboard side. Uh, I've got the uh, big rip in the starboard side, also this folded area where the hull bent. So the hull's bent at about 11 degrees forward. I've leveled that off so that it'll fit on my board. In the, in the real ship, it's probably buried about uh, 60 feet, but uh, I just wanted to level it off for uh, ease of constructing my model. Also got uh, some deformation there in the middle of the hull. 
as well as the bending and fracturing of the uh, aft portion of the bow section. The bilge keels are in place. They're pretty straight, not too much deformation. They just broke off at the uh, main fracture. Okay, so what I will add to this is the uh, five boilers from boiler room number two that will be sitting on top of the uh, double bottom of the hull. We'll be gluing those in place. These uh, boilers I cast in resin and where's the rest of the kit? I also cast the uh, reciprocating engines. So there's the uh, the base of the reciprocating engines. There are the five single-sided boilers that are scattered around the debris field and all the other parts, the cylinders and uh, stands of the reciprocating engines. I'll talk more about those in a later video, but I am going to make these available for sale. I know there are several people who are interested in uh, purchasing uh, the reciprocating engine kit. As soon as I uh, make some improved uh, silicone molds and cast some new parts, I definitely will have these available for sale at a very reasonable price. Um, so yeah, so there you have it. So in the meantime, for the bow section, I'm using this row of boilers that'll be glued in place here. Uh, if you want to make your own boilers, I just use like half-inch dowel and then create the uh, little places where the guys, I don't know what you call it, where the guys put the coal in and also all the many uh, tubes. I have those modeled as well. All right, so there you go. There's the boilers. We'll put those in later. All right, so the hull, I don't think there's much else to talk about. The anchors are in place. And I am picturing some of the iceberg damage. Everyone wants to see the iceberg damage, although at this scale it's going to be very, very minimal uh, scoring. On the ship, it was just like a series of little dents that occurred along uh, the forward third of the ship. They penetrated just enough in each of the... Um, watertight compartments to make the practically unsinkable ship uh, very sinkable. And cool, so that's the hull. I don't think there's anything more to add to the hull. So I did create a board for it to mount the, uh, the hull. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now if I can find the screws there around here somewhere. Yeah, there's some screws. Because I am now ready to start adding to the hull. We'll get to some of the decking in a little bit here. Get that out of the way and get a screwdriver. I've already pre-drilled drilled the holes and fitted this thing. But we're going to go ahead and screw it in. Okay. Now, however you want to configure your model, if you want a nice big giant seabed for it to be in, if you want to set it diagonally, it's your model. You do whatever you want with it. Um, I wanted to show just enough seabed to uh, mount the ship on to indicate what the immediate area around the ship looks like. Okay. Find the hole. There we go. OK. 
cool. And then I've got a few more screws here to secure the forward part of the wreck. Okay. Cool, so the bow section is now mounted on the uh, board. I'll later on, after the uh, ship itself is done, I'll use cellu-clay to create seabed for this. But you can see now the uh, aft end of the hull is pretty flat. So I'm going to go ahead and um, cement the double bottom, just a little section of plastic there. Use some crazy glue. Okay. There's the double bottom going down. And then I'm gonna cement the resin boiler group. to the double bottom. Of course I put it in the wrong place and it cements immediately but I was able to pull it back up. Now hold for a second. Now let's get you attached to the hull. I think that's going to work out pretty good. I'm going to use a guitar maker's clamp. I also make guitars as a hobby. Far too many hobbies. make sure that that looks flat and it does okay so I'll give that a few minutes to set while that's setting let's talk about the forward well deck and the foc'sle spelled forecastle for some reason I don't know why they call it foc'sle but it's called the foc'sle that's this here so Depending on when, if you're going to use the Academy Minicraft um, Titanic model, 1350 a scale, depending on when it was made, if it's uh, the 1970s or 1980s, there's a lot of things that you're going to need to add to it. Uh, some of the newer uh, models have included, uh, let me find a little pointer here. This will work. No, it won't. It's too wobbly. Use a Q-tip. All right, cool. So, what I recommend is go ahead and construct the foc'sle with all the winches and the bollards and the capstans and the windlasses and the bits. Anything that needs to be built onto it, go ahead and do it. Uh, this section of the uh, actual wreck is uh, by far in the greatest shape uh, of the entire ship. Very, very little damage uh, done to it. Mostly just a lot of rust and um, a lot of sediment built up around it. Now on the model, as I said, go ahead and build up everything. Add your chains and such. But you're going to need to add uh, this kind of diagonal piece of metal. Also looks to be some steam pipes and a couple of valves that go from the windlass over to this area. So I constructed those just out of some scrap plastic. Also these supports need to be added on each side 
of the number one hatch. Another key thing is to thin any bit of metal on the hatches, uh, on the uh, hull plating, any bit of metal that exposed that's exposed really needs to be thinned out because if you were to leave it uh, the thickness that they are on the uh, scale model, you'd be looking at a couple of feet thickness of metal or railings or whatever. That's not to scale. I would suggest just taking, I use a Stanley knife for a lot of things, just taking a Stanley knife and paring it down till it's almost razor thin on all uh, four sides. Also, on the model, there is a bottom to the uh, well, uh, the, uh, yeah, you, the wells. I cut out the bottom on all of them. This one I'm just going to leave um, open. I'm not going to put any decking below it. But <clears throat> let's continue as to what needs to be added. So uh, we've got a little opening here, a square opening that needs to be added. Uh, we discussed the number one hatch. Uh, there's a vent. The top has been cut off. But that's uh, in place. There are also these steam pipes and valves on either side of this uh, steam winch. Also this Y-shaped series of piping. There's also a stream anchor. If you want to win a trivia game, and people will probably fight you with it, ask uh, the question, how many anchors were on the Titanic? And everyone's going to say three. You got the center anchor and the port and starboard forward anchors. There were actually five. Uh, there were those anchors that I mentioned. Also, there was this stream anchor on the starboard side of the forecastle. And on the poop deck, there is a kedge anchor, small anchor at the very rear of the ship. So anyway, there you go. Trivia. Also, on the older models, they don't have the crew galley skylight. So I had to make that out of scratch. On the newer models, they include it. So you may not have to build it if you buy a new model. But you need to have it there anyway. Now, on the older models, one of the big mistakes that they made is they failed to account for the center anchor. This is actually a recessed area. Let me see if I can find a photograph here to show you. Yeah, this isn't a very good picture, but uh, this is a view uh, looking from above. This area here is where the center anchor goes. So what we need to do is cut this area out from the forecastle. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So let me try to score that. Um, it's not actually circular. There are actually five sides to this. Looks like it may have been part of an, you know, a section of an octagon if it was uh, in a full circle. But anyway, I'm just going to try to break that off. All right, cool. That came out pretty good. Even that out a bit. Okay, I'm back here. All right, so cool. So we've got this portion of the forecastle cut out. So now what we need to do is to make a recessed area. I'm not going to use this section here, but uh, we're actually going to recess this a little bit with some scrap plastic. Also very important that you save this little bit of hardware. Another thing that's really um, incorrect on the Minicraft models, let me see if this is down well enough. No, it's not. So I'm going to throw some more glue in there. And let that soak in. And clamp it down again. It 
works better. All right. I have no idea how this video is going to come out, but anyway, people are screaming for a part two. So here's your part two, such as it is. All right, cool. One of the big mistakes that's made when people build Titanic models, when they make the railing, they have it go, the railing go all the way to the very tip of the forepeak and then heading back that way. So the railing goes all the way there. That's not how the ship was configured. The ship forepeak was configured with this little bit of hardware at the very tip. And then the railing curved around behind it. Curved around like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little bit. Uh, there's a it's like a block that the um, anchor crane is uh, rigged to. So I'm going to cut off this little section right here and glue it to the very tip of the ship. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to cut this. Can you see that? All right, live as it happens. Okay, cut that out. So now, I'm going to cut this all the way down pretty close. And cut it down on this side. Let me see if I can take that section off. Yeah, there it goes. Cool. So this is the little bit that I'm going to glue to the tip. So I'm going to sand it down a little bit. bad. I'm going to do a little bit more sanding, get a little more flush. All right, how does that look? Not bad. Cool, so this is going to go right in front here. Let me see how that looks. I'm going to try to bend it in just a little bit. See how that looks. Whoops. Lost it. Salvaged it. I think I want to sand it a little more. Okay, let's see how that looks. Yeah, I can live with that. 
Alright. Some crazy glue. And attach this part here. Okay, so there you go. Can you see that? So that goes to the very front, and when the foxel is cemented in, we'll have this um, forward center anchor to install okay I like the way that looks cool now on the uh, model there's um, like a section here that I don't know why it looks like it was made to have something inserted into it it's got a hole there but anyway I just ground out this area because it's going to be in the way of the anchor well it's doing some fitting that's going to work good all right so now, see how this is gluing. Clamp it down some more. I think I'm going to get another clamp to get on this side. Great. I don't think those boilers are going to go anywhere. So, so here we go. So I need some scrap plastic. Here we go. Here's a piece. I think that's going to be enough. Okay, cool. I'm going to sand this down. This is actually a piece of hull from the uh, uh, first hull attempt that I scrapped and uh, I'm now using it for bits and pieces. Okay, I want to sand the shine out of this. Cool. Alrighty then. So I'm going to glue that. Take a little bit of that pointy tip off. I like it. Completely unedited. 
What you see is what you get. Got a little bit of edge there that needs to be brought in a bit. Now I've got crazy glue all over my fingers, which is par for the course for me. I inevitably get more crazy glue on my person than on the parts themselves. Just the way I work. Proud of it. Alrighty then. So, now... It's pretty good. Looks nice. Good. That's going to work great for now. I'm going to then have to fabricate an anchor for this. Again, on the newer models, I believe they have the uh, anchor well and the anchor uh, built into the foc'sle. but I think that's going to work. That looks good. All right, cool. So we're going to leave that for now, because now I want to turn our attention to the forward well deck. That's going to go in before the uh, foc'sle goes in. Okay, I have it uh, assembled. Again, this is from the model that I picked up at the thrift store. The bend in the uh, ship, this 11 degree bend, uh, occurred right under uh, the bridge area. So what I did with this, I went ahead and installed the uh, this railing here. I installed the cranes. They're tilted back way up against... Um, this uh, bulkhead here. Okay, and a couple of things to note. When you build uh, the model, normally they have you run some thread or wire. There's a little hole here so that you have a double uh, cable. There's only a single cable on the real ship, and I just used some steel wire to make that single cable. Okay, so the anchors are oriented. Is that it? Oriented? Back. Like I said, they're tilted back. Okay. Not on the model is this crane rack that the cranes normally uh, rest on when they're at rest under sail. So I had to fabricate that out of little bits of plastic, angled plastic. You've got that. There are also a couple of, I don't know if they're vents, or what, but a couple of round things inboard from each crane. They're visible on the photographs of the wreck. I'll show you this. I'm referring to this right here. And uh, it's harder to see, but there's one on this side as well. Okay, the model comes with a vent here. You need to cut the top off that vent and glue it in, but also there are two smaller objects, what they are I don't know, uh, that are on either side of that. Other than that, you just put the bits, bollards, I don't know what you call those, but you put these parts like a normal model, and this uh, forward well deck needs to be bent down somewhat. So what I did is I um, 
thinned out. I thinned out the plastic here, and I also scored from there to there on this side to make it weak enough to bend, but not break. Uh, just wanted it to bend so that you've got a nice downward angle. Also, like the number one hatch, the number two and number three cargo hatches have a bottom on the model. I cut those out, and look at how when I use my, uh, uh, my this drill, this guy here, all right, it left a very rough surface. Ooh, I left that in. That looks awesome. That looks like rusticles and good things. So I left those in. But I also wanted to show what's visible on some of the photographs. Find another picture here if I can. Yes, it's a picture of Bob Ballard. Okay, here's the uh, number one cargo hold, number two, and number three. Number two, you can see some obvious debris down in there. And I wanted to picture that. And I also wanted to put a partition between the port and starboard sides so that if you were to look inside here, you can't see all the way through the ship. I think that just makes things look so phony or something when you can see through both sides of the ship model. So now I've got to locate the part that I made. Pictures out of the way. There it is. Cool. So, out of some scrap plastic, again, parts of the, the hull, I created this thing here. A couple of sides, a couple of decks deep, uh, some debris uh, glued to that. I kind of uh, painted them gray so that you can see them better. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue that. To the underside of the well deck. Okay. And so, can you see? Kind of hard to see the debris, but you can see it there. So let's go ahead and glue that. Also, I put this partition so again you can't see from port to starboard. that so that the debris underneath looks good. Looks to be fairly centered. Here's another thing I'm going to do in order to reinforce this. Is I'll take some baking soda. This is a great thing. I learned this in guitar making and repair for uh, fixing the nut that the uh, strings pass through at the headstock. Take some crazy glue and sprinkle some baking soda on it. It creates an instant bond and really reinforces whatever you're um, gluing together. Blow it off. All right, cool. So now I have this strengthened joint here. Again, some crazy glue and some baking soda. Sprinkle it on, spread it out. Instant bond. Great. That looks good. So, uh, I didn't mention that I had cut off uh, a good section of the uh, deck. I think this is, is this B deck? Here, I think this is B-Deck, I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm going to be gluing this to the hull. And uh, back here is about where the, the uh, collapsed decks start. So I'm just cutting that off there. I eventually will put a couple of holes for the funnels 
funnel casings as well as the grand staircase. But in the meantime, I'm happy just to uh, have this in this condition. All right, cool. So with the anchor, center anchor well installed, test fit everything, that chain out of the way. I think we're about ready to glue some decking to the hull and we'll finish up part two after we do that. We're at 41 minutes already. Again, I'm not editing this, so um, fast forward where you're bored or consider it ASMR and fall asleep. But Anyway, taking the clamps off, let's see if that held. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So there are the number two boiler room boilers in place. Oh, I was going to tell you about my base here. Get these out of the way. Okay, I made the base, uh, what's the dimensions here? On mine, uh, the wood is uh, nine and a half inches by 12, by uh, 20 inches. And I placed the uh, aft end about an inch away from the edge. Yeah, it's about an inch away from the edge. The reason I did that is that I want to be able to uh, uh, to butt the bow section and the stern section against each other. Butt them right up to each other uh, so that you can see how much of a gap um, is missing from those two main sections that's scattered around uh, the uh, debris field. And with the uh, aft section, it's also going to be about a inch back from the board. So that's why I did mine this way. Again, you do yours any way you want. Uh, you can mount the hull diagonally. You can make this circular. I don't care what you do. Uh, it's your model. But this is how I did mine. So there's the hull section looking forward on the port side and looking forward on the starboard side. And now, I'm going to mount the deck. Okay, one key thing, you want to keep this railing flush with the hull on both sides. The forward well deck is going to be flush with the hull here, and uh, you're going to have this section bent down a bit. So I'm just going to start gluing things and taping them up. And let's see what happens. Huh? I don't think I'm rushing anything or missing anything. And I'm not being very neat. So what? There's lots of seams that are going to be covered with mud and debris and rust. And if it's a little sloppy, I can live with it. Cool. I think I've got everything, including my fingers, glued up. So I'm going to start right here. Press those in a bit and get some tape. Okay, looking good. Not 
enough tape. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, I'm not even going to worry about this. I'm going to cut this off. Just like that. Awesome. Get that out of the way. Now I don't have to worry about anything when I mount the foc'sle. Oh, that's going to look good. Good to go with that. We got good fit. Okay, a couple more lengths of tape to keep the hull together. Yeah, I'm real happy with that so far. With this coming out as uh, good as it is, I think you're going to see. Part three and part four and all the other parts uh, in rapid succession now because I got my mojo back and uh, things are coming together pretty well. Yeah, I really like the depth of the uh, hatches you can see down in there. You can also see what looks to be decking inside the tear here. Um, the only place you can see from starboard to port is down here. That's going to be covered in mud. It's going to look nice and solid. Okay, cool. So, uh, in subsequent uh, videos in part three, I'll finish up the uh, foc'sle. We'll make an anchor for the anchor well. And then we'll start on the superstructure, which uh, I have here. Again, this is from that model that I bought. I think I paid $10 for it. That's a real deal. I grabbed it up. And this will end up here, and then we'll make it look uh, completely uh, destroyed. I have cut it off at the expansion joint. So um, that'll be accurate. But anyway, this is uh, what we have so far. Uh, can't think of anything else to add to this. Give me your comments, uh, good, better, and different, as long as they're uh, respectful and uh, for the better good, and I will uh, respond to uh, any and all. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed part two. Have a nice day.